Have you been considering adding a green screen to your setup so that you can either appear as an overlay on your presentations, maybe have a little bit more fun with some aspects and having these creative and innovative backgrounds? Well, you can do a lot with a green screen and today I'm gonna get into the basics of how do you incorporate a green screen into your presentations? We'll talk about why you wanna do it, when you would do it, how you actually do it, and do a little demo of how you can set up your green screen. But I also wanna talk about some really important considerations if you are thinking of going this way, because it can be a little bit tricky, a little bit finicky, so we will get into it. So today, it's all about green screens, and I'm focusing on presentations. There are a lot of ways that you can use green screens, but today, because my channel, I try to help you with more engaging and professional online presentations, we're gonna to stick to that topic in general, but hopefully you'll get a really good feel for it. And yes, right now, even though this is my typical background, I am in front of a green screen. So if we take away this background picture that I took, it's green. And actually my hair looks a little messier on this green screen with this background. And I know I'm zoomed in, so you might think, well, what does the green screen actually look like? Well, I'll go a little wider. This is my studio and I usually do crop these aspects out. I don't like to be showing, you know, the door behind me or the bookcase, or you can see some of my lighting, which you'll also notice is off because those lights are behind the green screen. So the only light hitting the green screen right now is the light that is hitting me. And we're going to talk about lighting as well. So I don't, I'm not gonna keep on this screen. I do not like this scene. So let's go to something like this, which is one of the ways that you can incorporate a green screen is to have a plain background or maybe something with a little bit of texture that you can then focus on certain things. And then you might be able to add text. So it can be part of teaching. Right now, I'm using this as a scene. I've just put some text into my scene. I'm currently using Ecamm, but you can also do this with OBS. VMix, other streaming software. And you can use this as a way to <laughs> go over what it is you're talking about. So today I will say why, and I've kind of hinted towards that. When should we use one? Also what to consider when you are buying or using a green screen and how do we actually set it up? So I can use that as an introduction. When it comes to why, well, you can have a little bit of fun. You can also immerse yourself. So that's one of the biggest things is that instead of a typical presentation where a person is has a slideshow and then there's a little window of them, which is what we are very used to in this virtual presenting world, you could be maybe overlaid How long have I been muted? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yay. Okay. I was muted on the slides. You missed so much wonderful stuff. <laughs> this is the beauty of live. And when I'm setting up green screen scenes, the, the trouble with, yeah, she just, I see that. She just figured it out. Okay. So you missed about half a minute and it was gold and maybe you'll just never hear it again. I'm kidding. Let's talk about this. So we have our green screen overlay for a presentation and you can go through the slides, but one of the disadvantages is that depending on what is on the slide, you might not necessarily be able to see it. So something like this is not ideal. We have to be conscious of if we are planning to use something like a green screen, 
that we want to make sure we are conscious of those things. And this is an example of a more immersive, you actually using a video, maybe you have a scenic area outside, maybe you're teaching about space and you could have planets in the background. So you can make it a little bit more creative. It gives a visual element to what you are teaching. And it's also a pattern interrupt. So when I say that, I mean, people are not used to seeing video behind you necessarily. And you can do a little bit more with that. So these are some of the things that you can consider when it comes to a green screen when you would use it. So I think being on the screen with your presentation is definitely a helpful way to be incorporating and using green screen. But I also want to address that sometimes people maybe have a distracting background or when you're in a remote work setting, you don't have much control over your room or the space. And in that case, you want to make sure that you can do something and there are virtual options. If you are in Zoom or Teams, most of the web conferencing apps let you pick a virtual background, but there are some drawbacks to that. Oftentimes someone's limb or maybe part of their hair, they go missing. And that to me is incredibly distracting. So if you want to have a different background, I personally would rather someone get a green screen and just pick their background because their limb is not gonna disappear. Unless you have, I don't have it here. Sometimes when we're on a green screen, so if I go back, let's go to the slide demo. If I go this way, my hand is going to disappear. <laughs> and that's one of the things that you want to consider is when you are picking your screen, can you, how wide is your camera angle? So let's get into some of the things you wanna think about when it comes to a green screen. Your camera angle matters. As you saw earlier, I had the green screen. Right now I have the green screen. I've got it pretty tight, but some people like to be a little bit wider or be showing more in their video. In that case, you might run into the fact that you'll have green screen on the sides. The rest will be filled, but your limbs will disappear when you're outside of that. If you are purchasing one for the first time, you may want to consider a wider green screen if you have a wide camera angle. The other thing is whether or not you want this to be portable. So in this case, the one that I'm currently using is the Elgato green screen. It is portable. It's also collapsible. I can do a demonstration of the collapsibility. If we go back to the wide angle for a moment, you will see, actually you can't see it, but up there, there's a little handle and I can easily push this down and pull it back up. That is something you also want to consider. You would also like it to be flat or not have any seams, which brings me to one of the challenges that I had, which is when I first bought a green backdrop, meaning I actually had two stands, a bar going across the top and a green cloth. It came folded and a few of the backdrops came folded. Getting seams out of backdrops when they have been sitting folded waiting to be sold, it's kind of a nightmare. And even if you, you know, got steamer, iron, whatnot, sometimes it's really hard to get those out and that will impact the, the scene because a seam has a slightly different color. Sometimes it'll, it'll have some contrast and so it won't be seamless. So having something like a collapsible one or one that can roll, those will be flat or seamless and that will be a better green screen experience. So that is something that I definitely want you to think about. And is there anything else? Oh yeah, there are options, for example, with some of the wide ones where you could have it mounted to the ceiling. Let's say you know you're going to use it a lot and you are in a space that you're going to stay. You could mount something to your ceiling and then you just pull that down so you don't have to worry about if you collapse it, then having to put it away. I've definitely, when I first had this, bumped into it a few times. So now I have it, I actually show you in this picture, so over here where my bookcase is, I actually just kind of lean it against the bookcase and it stays. And then if I put it down, it's in approximately the right location centered for my studio setup. But the beauty of something like this is that I can also move this because it is a portable green screen. Let's say I'm traveling. I'm going to be in a hotel or an Airbnb where I have no control over the background. 
I could bring my green screen and then I could throw up whatever backdrop I wanted. And I could do something like this. And even though it's not quite natural, it is something that people are a little bit more used to. I can pick what the background is that I want. And so that's something that you can absolutely do. So whether you are using the green screen to immerse yourself in the presentation or you are simply wanting to present and look professional in the background and your background is not professional, those would be the main reasons why I would think when it comes to presentations that you would want to be using a green screen. All right, lighting. Let's talk quickly about lighting. And you'll actually see if we go to my green screen, this, oh, my hair looks so, so one of the things that's funny, I did purposely wear my hair back for today's live stream because when your hair is down, that is where you can actually have the most obvious evidence that you are using a green screen. For example, if we go back to this studio background and I turn my head, you can see my hair looks almost pixelated at the back. It's like it's not quite right. So depending on your hair, that might be sort of the giveaway that you are using one. I also feel like there's just a slight mismatch. Sometimes you can also have a, a subtle green hue on your skin or on your shirts. So one of the things we want to think about is lighting the green. Now, as I mentioned, this green light is being lit the same way that I am being lit, which in my case, I have two LED lights that are bouncing off of a light curtain. And that's what's lighting me. It's also lighting the green screen, but not evenly. So as, I get, as you get further down, it's actually a little darker, which means there's a gradient. And that can affect the ability for you keying out the green. It might not be keyed out evenly. And that's why we want to make sure that we light the green screen properly. There are people who know what they're talking about much better than me <laughs> when it comes to lighting your green screen. So I'm going to recommend that you go onto YouTube and look at the wonderful tutorials about properly lighting it. But I would say you want it to be green and you want it to be as even as possible so that once you key that out, it's consistent with being keyed out. But for the most part, the green will be keyed out. But when I was, and I'll do a little demo in OBS, it's a little more obvious in OBS. You'll start to see a little bit more of a gradient towards the bottom. So wanted to make sure that I covered that. Okay, how do you actually set it up? Well, one of the first things is getting it behind you. So in this case, it's on the floor and I pulled it up. But if you had something like I talked about with that, the drop back, or if you have something from the ceiling, even if you have just a plain wall, you can cover it with green, but as much as you can try to remove seams. And it doesn't have to be green. You can actually apply different colors. Often the other option is blue. So in Ecamm, you can choose green or blue. In OBS, you can choose green, blue, magenta, I think is another one, or custom colors. So it doesn't actually have to be green. But when it comes to skin, skin doesn't usually have much green in it. So that tends to be a go-to option. So you don't want to just do any old color and think about what you wear <laughs> because that's another consideration. So once you've got that set up, you have then your camera. So personally, I like to try to zoom this in as much as possible so that if I put this camera, I can actually fill this frame with my camera and there's green all behind me. But let's say you can't actually do that. You can still apply the key. It's just that you might run out of some space beside you. So let's take a look at, I'm first going to show you how to set something up in Ecamm because I'm actively using that, but I also have OBS set up, so I will be able to show you that as well. So let's go into the demo. This is Ecamm right here. And right now I just have my main camera. So my Camlink 4K is my Sony ZV-1 camera. Here you'll see there's my FaceTime camera. You can also see the green screen is behind me. And in this scene, I've, I've zoomed in. So on the right hand side in Ecamm, you can see that I've zoomed in considerably. If I start to zoom out, you can see the edges of the camera. And if I were to apply the green screen, which I click here, now it defaults to a picture. So it has a picture, but then you can click transparent. 
And now the transparent, you'll say, what's, why is it just blue behind her? In this case, it's because I actually do have a background that is applied, but it's only covering the backdrop. So how do I make sure that it's all fit in here? And so in this case, I would actually not have myself as the main camera. I would have a picture behind me. So if we take the studio example, let's go add an image. So if I add an image here and I say that I want to go to my backgrounds folder and get the studio background. Now I have a picture here. So the picture is what's here. So now I'm going to add myself. So I'm going to add myself as a camera overlay. So an Ecamm down in the overlays area, I click this little button here. This is not the camera I want. So I click on this little pencil. I choose the camera that I want. If you only have one, then it's a little easier. And here's where I would pick the custom, or you could pick something like the square. That's probably going to cut it out. Now I'm a lot smaller here. Square or custom. Custom, you have a little bit more control. I want to make sure I don't have a border around me. I don't want to have a circle around me. And here's where I will try to drag it to the approximate size. And this is where it's a little bit tricky because if you are not in a space, you don't necessarily know how big you look in the space. So it can be a little awkward. Also here you can see my hand disappearing because I do have the border. But if I went wider, then suddenly the stuff that's not in the green screen would start to appear. And we don't, we don't want that. So that is why I am cropped out. And let's see if I can, <laughs> what did I do here? <laughs> anyway, I'm just, let's see, okay. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna crop it down to this size and then I can bring it back down. You also wanna make sure that there's not a crack in the bottom. So if I were to exit my demo mode and show, now all of a sudden there's this part missing. I look disjointed. So you want to make sure that you are positioned properly so that you're at the bottom. And then I encourage you with your overlays, I like to lock your overlay so you can't accidentally move yourself. So that is one of the things that you want to do here. And if you wanted something like the video background, same as the picture, instead of using that picture, which I have the studio background, if I hide that, now I do, <laughs> my camera is actually in the background. So I would want to make sure that, so there's a duplicate of me. I would say for Ecamm, do a blank source and now there's no camera behind me. It's just the camera overlay. And I have a background here in this background. If I wanted to bring in the video, then I could bring in the video. So if we take a look at this one, this is a video overlay. And then I have myself. When it comes to the order, make sure that you're in the right order. So if I were to have the video on top, I'm not on top anymore. So I want to make sure that I, my camera is on the top layer. If you wanted to put something in front of you, so maybe you have a background and you have a foreground, like maybe I wanted to have me sitting behind a desk, I would have the desk in front of me, then my camera, and then the background. So that is the setup here, but let's take a look at OBS because I know a lot of people like to use free and open source OBS. And let's do a little screen share here. Okay, so I have OBS and I recreated a similar scene, but what I found with OBS is that it's, a, and there might be a little delay, <laughs> so bear with me, but I find that the green is a little bit more obvious on here and it's I, I'm adjusting the chroma key, but it's a little bit finicky. So if you have OBS, you wanna pick your background. So that can be a still image like I'm using here with my studio background. You could also pick a video like I showed you in the video, or you could overlay your slides. If you have PowerPoint slides, etc., you can do that. So let's actually, let's do a new scene. And I'm going to just call it, yeah, I'll call it scene two. Oh, am I muted? No. Okay. <laughs> just <laughs> double checking. So I'm going to add, let's just add the image nice and easy here. And I'm going to just cheat. I've already uploaded my studio background. So I'll say yes there. And that's, that is huge. I can do command F to sort of fit it here in the middle. Nice little trick there. And now, and I can lock this in place. 
and I'm going to add my camera. And so I will add my video capture device. I already have the camera, so I'm going to add that. And, oh, it's already keyed out because I've already done this, but let's take a look. If you have this and it's green on your filters, so for filters for the camera, there's a chroma key. So if we take this off, if I get rid of this chroma key, you'll now see that I've got my green. If I close this, I now have my green, like what's showing in my camera is now showing up. So I will, I can click on this, open my filters. Once the filters are open, I'm adding a chroma key. So I will add chroma key, say, okay, I want it to be green. And this is where you can play around with some of these adjustments. So if I just close it and use all the defaults, you can see there's a green, little green glow around me. And also I haven't cropped this. So you want to crop. So I would just use the option, hold down option. Come on. There we go. We're going to hold down option and just drag this in so that I have all of that hidden. And so now all of the green is keyed out. And, but this is where I would adjust those filters. So when you are in these filters, you can start to play around with things like the smoothness. You can bump this, I think you want to bump that up. You can also bump up the spill reduction. So those are some adjustments you can make. I think I had this one up to maybe 120 to try that out. So you can try different things to, to get the look or feel that you like. And remember, if you are cropped, be careful of your hands because they're gonna go away. So that is how you apply a filter. And again, you can add a video in the background, you can add a background and a foreground, and it's all about the order. If I were to drop this down, suddenly the picture is on top. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct, that you have your camera where you want it. Okay. <laughs> I do, I think I wanna show, I'm tethered a little bit to, to the desk because of my in-ear monitors, but I do wanna show you maybe the collapsibility. So let's go back to this scene or maybe I'll go back to the wide. So we've got the wide and if I, and I'm gonna walk away from the microphone, <laughs> but let's see how easy this is to collapse. This is the Elgato collapsible green screen. So it was just a matter of a push and then it's down and for bringing it up, and it stays up. So this is for me far preferred over what I had before. Before when I was using the, or before when I had the backdrop, it was just the cloth fabric and just even the amount of time it would take to put up the posts and the bar across the top, slide the fabric through the bar. That was a hindrance. And I think anything that's gonna slow you down, you are less likely to do. So what are some considerations when it comes to using the green screen. I would say one of the biggest is once it's behind you, it's behind you, you need to have a fake background. Whether that's a video, whether that's your slides, you can't just suddenly switch to a scene. I mean, you could just switch to a scene like this, but that's awkward. No one wants to actually see your green screen. Theoretically, you could plan it away where maybe you show in a little interlude and you could just push down the green screen, that would absolutely be possible for you to do. And then you could go back to your regular background, but that's something you wanna know. The other consideration would be on the slides. So if you want to overlay yourself onto slides, take this slide demo. This is where I would want to uh, just go through some of these. Something like this is great. You just wanna choose where's your position and where is the content because you do not want to overlap with your content. So there are a few good, and even this, I find this a little awkward because I'm here, but also there's a stock photo of a woman here. I would maybe pick a texture or something else behind me. So you want to think about the actual creation of your presentation. If you're like me, you may not even use slides. You might just use an overlay. You can add images, you can add video in the background. You can change things up, make it a little bit more dynamic. That is definitely an option that you have. But once you've got that green screen, the green screen is there. The other piece for consideration is your hair. Might, it might have some trouble 
because you might have a little bit of the green screen showing behind your hair, but you've got fine movement of your hair, it just, it's a lot more difficult to hide. So in my case, I decided for this demo, I would pull my hair back, but that is something that you want to think about. And there was another consideration I really wanted to share with you and I'm forgetting about it. Oh, <laughs> okay. You don't want it to be distracting. And so that's where you have, if you have a mismatch, like if I was completely out of scale with my background, that's really strange. Something like this, which is pretty neutral, someone could kind of get used to and it's not gonna be overly distracting. Also, if you're using videos, like this might be fun to add in an element of movement, but you also don't wanna make the person sick who's just watching you and it's constantly moving while you're staying still and they're asking you to focus on something. So I really feel like your decision of what you put in your background should complement what you are doing and it should, it should enhance the learning. If you're presenting, what does it add? Is there a visual in the background that is related to what you're talking about? Are there some speaking points? Or is it a little bit more neutral during certain points? Or is it in a presentation where you're overlaid on top of that? I actually think if you overlay and you do it well, that draws more attention to the speaker. You can speak to those important points and you can keep the audience a little bit more engaged because you're there. The other thing you can do is make yourself disappear. So let's say I did have a slide demonstration like this and I, I didn't want to be on this slide. I can actually either set up a scene or have a button that triggers for me to just disappear so that you don't see me. And then if we go to another slide and I think actually I'd like to be on this slide, I can make myself reappear on the slide. So there are things that you can do because you're using streaming technology, which brings me to another point, which is that you need something to key out that green screen. So if you are someone who's never used a streaming software, maybe it's time to try <laughs> because you will want to use a virtual camera if you are bringing your presentation into something like Zoom or Teams or another web conferencing software, if that's how you are doing your presentation. If you're streaming it, then you definitely need a streaming software. But those are some things I want you to think about. I also think you can have a little fun with it, but I would say have fun that's not distracting from the purpose. What is your goal of the presentation? How are you using the green screen and the backgrounds as a way to enhance someone's learning? Maybe it will help them remember it better. Maybe it will help evoke a certain emotion. These are all wonderful things you can do, or maybe it helps tell a story. It should enhance, not distract. And so those are the things I want you to think about if you are considering using a green screen in your presentations, because it can help make them more professional and more engaging.